Hi there, welcome back to Daniel's Very Random Channel on YouTube. This is Daniel Rosal here. The channel is taking the direction about life in Israel, all aspects of it, the interesting places I see, the interesting people I meet, all the various interesting facets of living in Israel. So if you do want to get videos on my um, other random list of topics, I've done videos about Turkish coffee, M-Discs, long, long list. Do check out a little side YouTube channel I started up called Daniel Rosal Plus, but only if you're really, really interested. If you like the videos about Israel, you want to get more videos about Israel, this will be the place. Okay, today I got a letter in the post from the um, tax authority and it's it, it struck me as a good time to do a video about the disadvantages of um, being an Atzmai or a self-employed person in Israel. Because this is definitely one of the facets of life in Israel that I can speak a lot to. I've been doing this on and off, but mostly on since 2015. So for eight, eight years, so this will be my ninth year as an Atzmai in Israel. Along the way, I've seen different permutations. I've been a VAT exempt trader, an OSEC pato. I've been a VAT non-exempt or a, a single trader who has to pay VAT, an OSEC Moshe. I've done hybrid jobs. I've done office jobs. I've done freelancing alongside an office job, being a Sakhir and an Atzmai. I've done lots of different permutations and I've, I can sort of see the pros and cons from having done both in Israel of being an Atzmai and being a Sakhir. Atzmai, independent worker. Sakhir, conventional office worker. You work for a company, you get a pay stub. And I can speak a little bit about specifically, I wanted to focus on the disadvantages of being an Atzmai because there are a lot of advantages I want to leave them for another video and maybe talk about the broad pros and cons in another video but today I wanted specifically to focus on the disadvantages because for people looking at getting into this and I predict that there's going to be a lot more people not just in Israel but around the world getting into either full-time uh, self-employment or doing this alongside conventional office jobs, doing that mixture. I think that's very much the direction we're, we're headed in. So the first challenging part of being an Asmai in Israel is I would say if you're looking for an easy way to make money and um, you know not have to worry about you know just to have a good job and leave it at that and have a lot of energy to put into all the other important aspects of life, especially one's life in Israel, social life, learning Hebrew, etc. I would probably not recommend going down the Atzmai right because it is very, very hard. There is a lot of moving parts to keep on top of. And that basically come down, comes down to the relationships you have to have as a um, Atzmai, as an independent trader, what in the UK and Ireland would be called a sole trader. And just to quickly talk about the forums for those who maybe are watching this video because they're thinking about doing that or someone they know is doing that. In Israel, you have what are called uh, OSEC Patur and OSEC Morsha, which are both non-corporate independent trading entities. One has to charge 17% VAT. Some professions can only be done as an OSEC Morsha. And after you hit a certain threshold turnover, you need by law to go from a patur to a Mursha. Once you become an OSEC Mursha, that non-exempt, you need to report to the uh, VAT authority, part of the tax authority, every two months. You need to do a reconciliation of, here's the VAT I charge to Israeli clients. Here's any VAT I deducted from any deductible expenses from Israeli merchants. And this is the reconciliation. And here's how much, here's how much I owe, or here's how much you owe me government. Even if it's zero and zero, you still need to do it. So yeah, being an Atzmai, um, and that's 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 just me as a non-American, by the way. That's another aspect is that a lot of people in Israel who are uh, attracted to the world of self-employment are Americans and dual American Israeli citizens. And then they need to worry about the extraordinary um, extrajudicial taxation of the IRS and that's a whole nother headache which I can't speak to because I'm not in that situation myself. Basically you have your Betuach Lumi and as of a few years ago you also need to worry about a pension. Now this is a good thing um, you know the government is basically telling independent independent workers that even if you're ba barely scraping by you need to contribute a minimum amount to your pension be putting away every month so that when it comes to your retirement age you are not destitute and penniless and then we're going to have to take care of you then so it's kind of proactive uh, a proactive move in the government it's always of course advisable 
to have a pension, it's even including if you're an atmai. But the change a few years ago was that that was made mandatory. Technically, if you don't make your con your minimum contributions, uh, you can be fined. It's not a huge fine, but it's a fine. The tricky thing about these things, betoach lumi vat pension. It's not that they're inherently that difficult to do. I will talk about the cash flow issues you can run into later. It's that they all take time and especially if you've got the language barrier, you've got to deal with that aspect of it as well. As I've moved on my own journey from I started doing this in 2015 uh, because I saw a lot of Israeli companies hiring writers and I was like, sure, I'm looking for a full time job, but I need money for now. So I'll, that's how I started freelancing. And over the course of the years, as I've been an office worker and a hybrid worker and a remote worker and just a freelancer, I've gone through all those things as the freelancing has become less just sort of a short term thing and more, OK, this is my career. Um, the complication has increased. So I've needed to, I open my file myself, which is something I probably wouldn't recommend doing. But if you want to open your own teak, there is, you can do that. You don't need an accountant. But I, in the first year, hired an accountant and now I work with an accountant and a bookkeeper and a pension advisor. So if you want to do this well and properly, you're either going to need to spend a lot of time learning about the nuances of different pension funds and how much you should be contributing and not on Karen Hishtal Muda. Make sure you're not missing out on any of these financial opportunities that are there to you or work with a pension agent. For Betuach Lomi and all the other stuff, you have to manage the reports yourself. You need to report to both entities every two months. And again, some people choose to have an agent for that, but if you don't, or you don't have money to pay an accountant to do that for you, or a bookkeeper, you need to do the reconciliation yourself. It's just a lot of extra work that none of these things are things you need to worry about as a Sahir, as an in-office worker. The company has a pension agent, you sign up to their track, their plan, you get a pay stub every month, it lists your pension deduction, it lists your Betuach Lomi contribution. You don't find that you owe anybody Betuach Lomi or whatever money. So it's a lot less stressful to be a in-office worker. It's a lot more, lot, lot, lot less complicated, put it like that. The second uh, disadvantage I would say in Israel is that there really aren't any guarantees. Now, I would say in terms of jurisdictions, I obviously can't compare Israel to every different country in the world. A couple of things stand out to me as this maybe isn't the most small business friendly country out there. The first is that the bureaucracy is, I don't like the word intense, I would say rigorous, right? They need you to report six times a year. It's almost guaranteed that every new a uh, trader is going to be asked to submit a statement of capital goods, what's called a Hatzarat Hon. So Israel takes reporting seriously, but there, it doesn't really offer much of a safety net if stuff goes wrong. So when you have a job in Israel, there's something called Pitsuim, which is like severance pay. Needless to say, if you're an Atzmai, it's your own, you're your own entity, you're not entitled to any Pitsuim. I mentioned that I've been doing this for a number of years now, and the only way that I've been able to actually do that is through having retainers a fixed monthly income or doing this alongside jobs i found doing it month to month way way too stressful but that can be another area problematic for a lot of people is that if you are doing this month to month and you run into the kind of feast or famine stuff which tends to plague freelancers wherever they live in the world you can go from having a really thriving freelance business whether you're a videographer a photographer a freelance writer or a freelance ux designer a programmer whatever, whatever you're doing you can go from doing really really well to doing really, really terribly. And there's no one there to support you. No one's gonna be, you know, there's no uh, grant or unemployment, even though you're contributing every month to Betuach Lomi, you have to, your state security, there's no safety net. I think that's probably something that Israel should change. I think that's a big disadvantage that people don't think about. It hasn't happened to me yet, thank God, but there have been extremely scary times during the past four years where one contract ended, I was looking for a new contract, there was a month, stuff worked out, but it could just as easily have not worked out, and I would have had a monthly income of zero, and I've been panicking, and in financial freefall. So go, go into that, aware if you're doing this, I really hope it's, it changes, because I do think that people should be encouraged to go in interesting directions, and if they are contributing to the state and social security every month, I think the state should have some kind of uh, protection scheme to help people they get back on their feet if they've had a really bad setback in their business as many ha as many had during corona and what we saw from the government was basically just kind of these once-off grant payments it wasn't a very generous uh, package for those who received it the final disadvantage is to being an atzmai in israel and i wanted to keep this video tightly about israel and that's why i'm ending with this because it's not really an israel specific point but 
being an independent worker means that you might be spending more time working by yourself or in a room by yourself like this room than you would in an office environment. Obviously, there's nothing stopping you from being uh, going on to client sites if you're and that's something that I find really helpful as well that I've done is every time I've had an Israeli client I've tried to utilize their presence or shared presence in Israel by asking or being proactive about meeting them in their office and working at their site and or just meeting at you know somewhere off-site I think it really really helped. Co-working spaces are great as well but you're gonna have to like engineer that stuff. Um, I hope that this uh, roundup sort of of the disadvantages of being an Asmai in Israel, it wasn't intended to deter anyone from doing that. I thoroughly believe that the best way to do this is to go into it understanding what the risks are um, and then look at the upsides and then make an informed decision about whether this is the best path for you. And I think the great beauty about the Atzmai system, the system of self-employment in Israel, is that for all its kind of complications, on the other hand, it's kind of nice to have that teak, that file. For instance, I just got a notification. I received a payment from YouTube. So that's also something I can legally do as an Atzmai. In addition to my other work, YouTube pays me as a monetized creator. It's a small amount now. Hopefully it'll grow. Um, but I just report that as income. I send an invoice to YouTube. That goes into my monthly report. I pay tax on that to Israel. And there's something amazing in that being an Atzmai and just having a file and being legally compliant with these entities means you can work with anyone, anyone around the world, passive income, active income. You're not restricted to just working with the open jobs in your local job market. And the final thing I would say, and I didn't want to go too far off topic with this, with an Atmai, you're never constrained. You don't have to just do this. You can definitely, if your employer allows it, do a mixture of Sakhir work and Atmai work. And of course, you can close your file, go back to working in an office and then open your file later um, when it suits. So I think there's a huge amount of inherent flexibility in the structure. Hope this is interesting. If you're thinking about doing your own, starting your own That's My Journey or you're already on it. And if you want to get more videos about uh, my thoughts about life in Israel and things I'm encountering here, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel.